This is a video for my year 12 students um, studying mechanics. It's the first, um, it's a test on friction, and this is question one. Now you should have this test already, but if you haven't had a chance to, uh, if you have lost your copy, reread the question. We've got a box of mass 29 kilograms and it's being pulled along a rough horizontal ground at a constant speed. So if there's a constant speed, we, that means we should immediately know there's no acceleration which is useful for later. The rope makes an angle of 23 degrees with the ground and the coefficient of friction between the box and the ground is 0 0.4. The box is modelled as a particle, all questions in M1 are modelled as particles, and the rope as a light inextensible string. Okay, Light means we don't have to take in consideration the mass of the string and it is a string, it's not a piece of elastic. The tension in the rope is p newtons, and we've got to find the value of p. Now, as is true for all of these questions, we start with a diagram. So what I'd like you to do is to draw a diagram now. Pause the video. Okay, well your, video, your um, diagram hopefully will look something like mine. Now I'm going to put the real forces only on my diagrams as usual. I know some advice is to put the resolved forces but I will only ever put real forces on my diagram to avoid double accounting and any confusion. So there's my contact force, normal contact force and here's my weight acting vertically downwards and it's got a mass of 29 so it's got a weight of 29 G. Now there is a coefficient of friction and it's greater than zero so that means there will be a frictional force and it will oppose the um, motion. Now there is motion, it's constant acceleration, um, it's constant velocity so the acceleration is zero in both directions and the frictional force will be opposing the motion so it will be in that direction. So that is a complete diagram and that's the kind of diagram I'd like to see for every question that you do. The forces are identified clearly and they are labelled so that we come on to do our work later then you have everything that you need Okay. right now we're going to try and find P so let's start off by resolving forces so we're going to resolve the forces we're going to resolve horizontally and I'm going to take direction to the right as positive positive. and as usual I'm going to use Newton's second law of motion where the force is equal to the mass times by the acceleration this is the important bit. In this case, we know the acceleration is zero because the speed is constant. So then, every force acting in this direction is positive. Every force acting in this direction is negative. And every force perpendicular to the plane that we're resolving has a zero effect. Okay, now you remember we did that in lessons, but if you're not sure of why that's true, come and see me. So let's start with the forces acting to the right where well, we've got the component of the force acting in plane with my, the direction I'm resolving so that's going to be P cos 23 and again if you're struggling with, with, with resolving forces come and see me and you can subtract from that the force acting to the left which is a frictional force there's no other forces acting on this particle and we know that's equal to zero so we've got one equation with two unknowns so we can't solve that at the moment so if in doubt, resolve in the other direction. So this time we're going to resolve perpendicular to our original direction, so vertically. And I'm going to take up as positive. F equals MA again. So now the forces acting up are R and P sine 23. And the force acting down, which is going to be a negative because we've taken up to be positive, is going to be minus 29 g and that equals zero. So we've got two equations now with um, unknowns but which unknowns are linked because there's one more thing we should know when um, a particle is moving well we know normally that friction is less than or equal to mu times by r where mu is the coefficient of friction and r is the normal contact force. Okay and when things are moving then we've reached the limit of friction which we can write as the limit of friction and that is when friction is equal to mu r. Okay, at that point 
there's no more frictional force available. And that's a tr true in this particular problem. That friction there is actually the limiting friction. So we can write that as phlegm. Now we can see we've got a link here. We've got the limiting frictional force here is equal to mu, which is 0 0.4 times by R. Now R is, we can work out what R is from this equation. So R is equal to 29G minus P sine 23. P sine 23. So that means the, friction, the limiting friction is equal to 2 fifths 0.4 lots of 29g minus p sine 23 because friction is equal to mu r in this case and mu is um, 2 fifths or 0.4 I tend to work in fractions it just makes the solving equations a bit easier I think it makes it a bit easier later on right so now we've got this equation up here and we can substitute this for this so we bit get p cos 23 minus 2 fifths of 29g minus p sine of 23 and that equals 0 so what we can see now is we've effectively solved a simultaneous equation using the two perpendicular resolved directions and when we finish off solving this equation we'll get the value of P. So what I want you to do now is see if you can solve it from there. So we're solving this equation so the first thing we're going to have to do is if we multiply out this bracket get P cos 23 minus 2 lots of 29 over 5 G plus P 2 fifths of P sine 23 and that equals 0. Now we need to collect together everything that includes the, the um, factor P on the left hand side of the equation or the right but let's say the left and everything else on the right so that we can factor out the P. So let's keep the P cos 23 plus 2 fifths of P sine 23 and let's add this term to both sides Right, so we just added that term to both sides. Now that we can factor out p, and now finally we can divide through by that and work out p. So see if you can finish it from there. Right. So that's our last equation. Now you could have gone to numbers much earlier, but be careful if you work out what cos 23 is, because cos 23 will be a, um, a decimal answer, a non-recurring decimal answer, and as soon as you start simplifying, you'll lose accuracy. So if you can leave it in this form, then that's fantastic. And also, modern calculators allow you to type exactly that into them and work out the exact answer, and then you'll be able to give it to three significant figures. Now we've got 105 newtons, point 105.57239, so P is equal to 106 newtons to three significant figures. Now that's the magnitude of the force. We were asked, let's just check what we actually asked for, and we were said find the value of P, so in this case that would suffice. If it asked for the force, we would also have to have identified the direction of the force as well, which we could have referred to the original diagram. So remember to box your answers as well to make it easier for the examiner. So we get 106 newtons to three significant figures. Okay, here's question two on the same test. Again, you should have the test paper in front of you, but if you don't, let's have a read through. We've got a ring this time of mass 0.8 kilogram, kilograms, and it's threaded on a fixed rough horizontal curtain pole. So it's rigid, it won't bow, so it's going to stay horizontal. A light inextensible string, again we don't have to take into account the mass of the string and it won't stretch, is attached to, this, to the ring. 
the string and the pole are in the same vertical plane. So what you can think of it is it's the same sheet of paper, so we're not having to worry about a three-dimensional problem. It's limited to a two-dimensional problem. Okay, so here's my diagram. We've got the bead, which is threaded onto a curtain rail, and I've got a force acting down in this direction of an angle alpha, and this tension is three newtons. Now let's add the other forces. It's in contact with the um, curtain rail, so there must be a normal contact force which is perpendicular to the surface, well in this case perpendicular to the rail, and we're going to call that R. It's going to have a weight acting vertically down, which is going to be 0.8 G. And there's going to be a frictional force, because we're asked to find the coefficient of friction, and that's going to oppose motion, so I'm going to say motion is, well, the it's being pulled in this direction, so the friction is going to be opposing that motion, so it's going to be in this direction here. So friction is acting in that direction. And we've got to find mu. Now the question doesn't state it, but it would normally state it, and in this case we can say that it's either not accelerating because it's a constant velocity, or it's at the point of moving, in which case, in both cases, um, the acceleration will be zero vertically and horizontally. So that's my diagram. Now I haven't put any resolved forces on there as, as dotted lines. Um, I know some people do say do that but I recommend not to just because well I don't need to do it and I think it clutters the diagrams and there's a risk of double accounting. So now we're going to, to resolve our forces. Now we're going to be eventually using the idea that at the limit of friction, we talked about this in the last question, mu, um, limit of friction is equal to mu times by r. So if I can divide the limited friction by r, I will get the coefficient of friction, mu. So I need to find both the friction, r, or fr in this case, or we could have called it f lim on this diagram, the limiting friction, and r, and then divide one by the other to get mu. Now before we do that, let's just deal with this tan alpha equals 3 over 4. Now you can do the inverse of tan of th uh, 3 quarters and get um, an angle, but what I'd prefer you to do is to use a triangle, because then you can keep your answers as accurate as possible. So there's alpha. Now tan alpha is opposite divided by adjacent, so opposite divided by adjacent, and then th we can work out this length using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. Apologies. Just looked at the question again. It's tan alpha is 4 over 5. So it's 4, 5 like that. The 3 over 4 is the third question. Okay. So we can work out 4 squared, add it to 5 squared, and you get 41 and you've got a square root for that for the length. So now we know that cos alpha equals 5 over root 41 and sin alpha equals 4 over root 41. So we can use those as exact answers for a, when we're resolving our forces in a minute. So that's like an aside but we will need that later. Okay, right. So now we're going to resolve our forces. There's, I'm going to, normally I just work below, but you can't see my diagram, so I'm going to use another piece of paper. I'm going to resolve my forces. First of all, I'm going to resolve in horizontally. I'm going to take to the right to be positive. I'm using Newton's second law, F equals MA, but I know that A equals zero in my problem. So everything acting to the right-hand side is positive, everything acting to the left-hand side is negative, and anything acting up or down is perpendicular to that direction of, of, being, of resolving, so it's zero. And we get 3 cos alpha minus friction is equal to zero, because it's the resolved component of the force acting to the right, which is 3 cos alpha. So we know that friction equals 3 cos alpha. Now earlier on we worked out that cos alpha is 4 over root 41. So friction is going to be 3 lots of 4 over root 41. Just 
check that. Make sure I've got the right one. No, sorry, 5 over root 41. 5 over root 41. So friction is going to be 15 over root 41. So that's my frictional force, and I can put that into my calculator, but as soon as I will, I'll lose um, accuracy. Now we're going to do the same idea, but we're going to resolve vertically. I'm going to take up to be positive. I'm using F equals MA again, and A is 0. So all the forces acting up are positive, and all the forces acting down are negative. So we've got R acting up, and we've got to take away 0.8 of G, and we've also got to take away this component, the component of the three newtons acting down. So that's going to be 3 sine alpha this time. And that equals 0. So R is going to be equal to 0.8 G plus 3 lots of sine alpha. Now sine alpha is 4 over root 41. So we get 0.8 G plus 12 over root 41 as our r. Now remember we did that because now mu equals friction divided by r so that's 15 over root 41 divided by 0 0.8 lots of g plus 12 over root 41 which you can put into your calculator and work out the answer. And I make the answer 0 0.241 and remember the coefficient of friction is unitless so mu equals 0 0.241 to three significant figures and I want to box my answer now we're going to look at question three again have a look through on your own first try and do it on your own first and then Obviously, I'll go through it in a second. So we've got a parcel of weight, well, it's mass 7 kilograms, but they called it W, and I don't know why they've done that. So don't worry about that, and I wouldn't use the W. I just say mass is 7 kilograms, and it lies on a rough plane inclined at an angle of alpha degrees to the horizontal. And they give you, the an they give you tan alpha again. And now we know how to deal with that. We did that last question. The parcel is held in equilibrium by means of a horizontal force, and the force acts in a vertical plane through a line of greater slope of the plane. The parcel is on the point of sliding down the plane. Find the coefficient of friction between the parcel and the plane. So we've got a plane at an angle alpha to the horizontal, and we've got a parcel that sits on it. And let's put on the forces that we know exist already. Well we know there's going to be a weight of 7g, not to be confused with the w that they gave in the question, and that we know there's going to be a contact force, it's called the normal contact force, remember there's no strange contact force, it's the normal because it's at right angles to the surface. So we definitely have those two forces. What we've also got in this problem is a horizontal force acting in this direction and that is 18 newtons okay now we know from our um, angle work we did at GCSE that that angle there is going to be alpha and that angle there is going to be alpha so we can add those angles straight away and don't make your diagrams too small this is really is the size that I draw my diagram any smaller than that I would have found it difficult to right on the angle and if you can see I've even at this size it's actually quite difficult to read that ang um, to get that line to be a continual straight line. Now we've got one more force to put on, we've got friction. Now using the pen as an arrow we can either put the friction in this direction or this direction and obviously the, if we get there's only one direction for this particular problem and if we get it in the wrong way we'll get the answer wrong. Now it says the parcel is at the point of sliding down the plane, so it's about to slide down the plane. So which means frictional force always opposes motion. So as it's about to slide down the plane, the frictional force must be working in conjunction with this 18 newtons to hold the particle in place. 
So it's about to slide down the plane, so the frictional force is in the opposite direction. So the frictional force is up. Now, if it was about to slide up the plane, then the frictional force would be down. It's a very important um, thing you have to look out for in these questions. And again, we've got to try and find mu. Now, we know that um, it's about to move, so it's at the friction is at the point limiting friction. So that means that the acceleration up the slope is going to be zero, and perpendicular is also going to be zero. Okay, so that's our diagram. And again, I haven't put any of the um, resolve forces on my diagram. I don't need them. So I would now make a quick check to make sure that I've got all my forces in the right what direction. And I've, they've labeled them all. And now I can work from this point. Now we're going to use the idea that at this particular point, friction is equal to the limiting friction, which is equal to mu r. So if we can work out mu, to work out mu, we have to work out flim, limiting friction divided by r. So we're going to have to work out the frictional force, and we're going to have to work out the normal contact force and divide one by the other. Now to do that, we're going to have to resolve. So we're going to resolve in two directions. We're going to resolve parallel and perpendicular to the plane to work out the frictional force and the normal contact force. So let's start by resolving parallel to the plane and we're going to take it up the slope or up the plane as positive. We're going to use F equals MA. Now any force acting up the slope is a positive force. Any force or component of force acting down the slope is a negative and anything at right angles to that is zero. So let's start with the positive forces. So we've got the whole of friction and we add to that the component of the 18 newtons, so that's 18 cos alpha and we subtract from that 7g sine alpha and that's going to equal zero. Now we can resolve in the other direction and again if resolving you're finding difficult please come and see me and then we're going to resolve in that direction so it's perpendicular to the plane and again f equals ma so anything in this direction is positive and anything in that direction is negative. So we've got R minus 7G cos alpha minus 18 sine alpha equals zero. So we can rewrite this as friction equals 7g sine alpha plus oops, like minus 18 cos alpha and we can write, rewrite this one as r equals 7g cos alpha plus 18 sine alpha. Now we could have worked out alpha by doing the inverse um, tan of 3 quarters but we can use the same idea as we used in the last problem by just drawing out the triangle and I'm going to do it here and that's alpha, that's 3, that's 4 so we know that's 5 so tan alpha equals 3 over 4 cos alpha equals 4 over 5 and sine alpha equals 3 over 5 now what I'd like you to do is substitute those values carefully into these equations, then divide one by the other, um, the friction by the normal contact force, to get the coefficient of friction mu. So that's what i have um, going to put into my calculator. Remember G is 9.8 in maths. I know you do 9.81 in physics, but it's 9.8 in maths. So I make that, and here's my workings. 0 0.407 to three significant figures, so mu equals 0 0.407 to three significant figures. So that's the three questions that you'd had on your last test. Um, you can watch this video at any point, but you should really be able to do these questions on your own um, in a couple of weeks' time.